What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Movement is Medicine show. We have a incredible lineup today, and we're going to get into some really cool topics with our guests today, James and Willie. Welcome, gentlemen, the owners and founders of Rain Fitness. What's up, guys? How's going on? Excellent. We're loving to having you on. We're going to go deep on what you guys are doing because you're creating some waves in the fitness community and you're doing some incredible work. And we're going to we're just going to crack it wide open for people. And we're going to share the secrets of your system so people can understand what's possible for them. Also have Dr. Ashley, Dr. Tim on. Doctors, Hello, welcome. Hello, guys. Hey, hey. And of course, we have myself, the doctor host. I'm not really a doctor. I just pretend to be one on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> awesome so so willie james this is all about you today we want to we want to hear uh, more about you guys you know why don't you just kick us off real quick uh either one of you go first we'd love to just hear a little bit about you you know who are you how long you've been in business and and let's kick it off yeah i'll get us going uh my name is james robbins uh i would say i originally started out as a baseball player uh got drafted by the detroit tigers out of high school so i went and did that for about seven years But throughout that process, obviously, there's a lot of training involved, Um, you know, definitely staying active and staying in shape for my sport, Um, staying in the gym on the off season, during the season. So I just kind of, that got the ball rolling for me as far as uh, just health and fitness and strength training in general. Um, So by the time I finished up, uh, I had kind of a little bit of a footing underneath me. I did some training in the off season when I was home from the season. And it just kind of got that spark going and got me really interested. So by the time I was done, uh, I knew Willie, he'll tell you about himself here in a second, but um, he was already in the field working, uh, going through it all. And uh, we decided to kind of do something together and get that ball going. So that's when we started rain. Um, uh, Since then I've gotten certification through ACE fitness. Um, So we got that and Willie obviously has his degree, uh, which he can tell you about, but um, that's kind of my background in a nutshell. I love Uh, it, man. So you kind of came in through the sport angle. 100%. Yeah. I traded the the baseball bats for barbells. I love it. Yeah. Love that. Awesome. Willie, let's kick it over to you. What, uh, what was your, what was your path into fitness and, and how'd you get here? Yeah. Uh, so kind of the same idea. I played baseball um, all my life and I ended up going to Central Washington University where I got my four year degree in exercise science. Um, so, you know, and kind of the, the funny path to get there. So James and I have known each other since we were 10 years old. So we're best friends, uh, brothers. And so we've been through this a uh, long time together. Um, so we kind of knew that one day we'd probably end up together doing something uh, passionate, what we what we believe in. And uh, yeah, just kind of kind of going through the whole school thing, started off at Shoreline CC, played two years of baseball there, uh, battled through some injuries. So I had ACL surgery when I was 14 and I had Tommy John when I was 21. So kind of being around those uh, injuries obviously got me thinking about, you know, injury prevention and stuff like that when it came to my future. And I ended up going to Central Washington uh, for baseball, like I said. And I actually originally wanted to go there for firefighting. And it kind of worked out that they actually did not have uh, the program. And I don't know where I came across this online. I swear I saw it at one point. Um, My coach calls me a month before school starts and goes, hey, uh, what do you declare your major as? And so I went through the whole process and he goes, well, we don't have that. So long story short, (laughs) I had the passion of fitness uh, just from kind of just growing up. James and I both are weight loss um, individuals, if you will. So we both battled weight when we were kids. And so obviously I had my interest on that. And so, yeah, I went to school, got my degree. Um, it was an amazing experience when, you know, finished my two years there. And then from there, I was at a couple local gyms in the area, which is where James was training at the time and kind of just started getting in the field. And w- uh, once I started getting into it, I realized that this is something I wanted to do. Um, it was a passion that I was breathing for. It was just one of those things where just being around people, you know, to help people uh, was an amazing thing again, cause I kind of grew up um, and I didn't have a whole lot. I didn't have a lot of private coaches. I didn't have any strength coaches. I didn't have any pitching coaches, hitting coaches. I kind of had to do everything on my own. Um, just didn't have the resources, quite frankly, to do it back then. And so I just always want to be that outlet for people. And, and that's kind of how it struck my interest with it. Really, it was just a passion burning um, just to help other, others. And so that's when James and I came together. You know, when he finished baseball, we, we were living together at the time. And it was just one of those things where we knew, again, kind of where our lives were kind of going to put us. And it just worked out really well for us to start Rain Fitness back in 2017. And we've been crushing it ever since. And it's been amazing. We have an amazing uh, team behind us now. We just hired our first couple of employees, and yeah, we're kicking butt and having a good time doing it, man. 
Oh, man. That's an awesome story. Yeah, I, I was wondering, you know, whenever I hear like a youth athletic story yeah, that, that kind of that, that kind of goes down the path where they go get pretty hardcore like you guys both did in, in different ways, I'm always waiting for that injury, that injury like kicker to come in there because like seven out of ten times it's like I was doing this and I was on this track and I was going down this and I was going all out and and then boom, blew out my shoulder, blew out my knee, blew out something like, so, um, you know, I appreciate mm-hmm. you, you know, filling that in there. Cause I was like thinking, man, we need an injury story here with this athletics. I got, I got, I got a few. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. Because one of the points you bring up is that, um, you know, whether, whether we're, it's youth athletics or whether frankly it's athletics as, as, as we get into the gym as, as an adult, um, or, or wherever you are in your fitness journey, injuries happen and you don't oftentimes have coaches and experts to help you with what you're trying to accomplish. And one of the big challenges, and we see that in the clinic, of course, you know, I mean, people come in with injuries that they've been trying to kind of figure out on their own. And, and, and oftentimes you need that professional help, right? You need somebody to guide you, you need a plan and you need somebody who can get in there and help you make real progress. And that's exactly what you guys are talking about doing at rain. Mm-hmm. What, so we found a green three years ago. Now you have two locations. Correct. One location. One location. One location. Okay, one location. One location. Yep. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Are you are you thinking about growing? Oh yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's 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 always in our in our blood to kind of continue to grow. Again, the more we grow, the more people we can help. And that's uh, the bottom line. Again, so th- that's what it's always gonna come down to, man. It's just like if, if we can assist other people and help more people, uh, we're gonna find ways to do so, which is why we brought in um, our two employees, right? So James and I can go get more stuff done, uh, bring more to the table, offer more to the table so we can continue our success. Yeah, I love it. So there's all kinds of, you know, well, I get, let me, let me say this. So prior to COVID, we had all kinds of fitness options. You know, we had your big box gyms, we have your CrossFit gyms, we've got Barry's boot camp, Orange Theory Fitness, we got Zumba, we got infinite options hot yoga, cold yoga, goat yoga. We got all everything. There's a million things you can do for fitness. <laughs> yep. Post COVID all of it's gone. You know, I mean like the field was massively leveled from a fitness standpoint, except for some gyms and some, 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 uh, fitness communities that were able to pivot and find a way to create, um, powerful results in a new, in a new context, right. With new, with new limitations, new requirements. Um, so, so tell us about, you know, how you got, what, how, how you guys pivot and, and, you know, maybe even, maybe even before that fun, fundamentally, like, how do you guys approach things? How do you see yourself as different? Like what's the rain of kind of the rain approach to, to helping a person achieve their fitness and health goals? Totally. Um, just from the, the setup of the gym, uh, to start there, uh, once this all kind of started happening and we had to shut it down for two months, um, it was a great time for us to just kind of game plan and figure out what we wanted to do next. Uh, we knew something had to happen. Um, and we had the idea of kind of rearranging the gym, kind of the similar setup we have now. Uh, we just didn't really have a reason to do it yet. And it was took COVID actually just kind of, kind of push us towards that. So what we got now before we had like a huge kind of 50 foot by I would say eight foot turf lane. And we only had like three squat racks, uh, you know, one area dumbbell. So a lot of people kind of congregated in the back. There wasn't really a social distance wasn't a thing yet. Uh, so once that all happened, we ripped out the turf, we put new rubber down, we bought three more squat racks. We lined up everything on one wall and we tried to create what was just kind of like a home gym setup. Uh, so everything was at your station. You had your bar, your bands, um, you had your weights, everything was accessible there. Your stability balls, med balls, kettlebells, whatever you needed was at your station. So they would just kind of limit the movement, uh, throughout the gym and everybody could still feel like they had their own space. Nobody was going to go through their space. Everything was personal right there for them. Um, just so everybody felt comfortable when they were in the gym. Cause it's already kind of a, uh, I don't know, a setting where people are uneasy at times just because of what's going on right now. Um, so we had to do just the best we could with, uh, the situation at hand and just provide uh, a safe space for everybody. So we had a, we had a cleaning stations at each, um, each squat rack in line. Uh, we mop after every client and we're taking those little measures, uh, just to ensure that, uh, we provide, you know, a safe place that everybody can feel comfortable coming to and getting a quality workout in, um, cause everybody was itching to get back in the gym. Uh, obviously after, you know, a couple months down, but 
Uh, so we wanted to just kind of best position ourselves to provide that for people. Um, and it was the best decision we could have made. Uh, since we were able to do that, people, I think, really took on to that and respected the fact that we kind of we made it work for the situation at hand and to be able to give them an opportunity to come in and uh, do the work that they wanted to do and needed to do. Um, so that was great for us. But ultimately, just for, uh, you know, clients coming in, you know, we, we try to get to know clients on an individual basis and really just get to know who they are, what makes them tick, uh, their interests, uh, what their lifestyles look like, because that's going to better um, us in kind of putting together a program for them. Um, we don't want to put something out there that, you know, doesn't make sense for, you know, somebody to do when, you know, it doesn't even cater to their lifestyle or it puts them in poor positions. And obviously we're trying to prevent injury. So, uh, we get to go, we get to know them, we put them through an assessment and just through like, you know, conversation, um, learning about what their goals are, what their, you know, what they envision, um, just gives us a better idea to kind of tailor their programming. Um, so yeah, I think everybody enjoys that sure. aspect of it too. Uh, I'm going to jump in real quick. Um, I, I've known Willie and James as long, um, for as long as James has been with his fiance, um, who I went to college with and played basketball with um, for four years. Um, and so I've been, you know, in and out of, of these guys creating this business, creating rain and creating this lifestyle um, and I think it's really important to, to realize the, the uniqueness of what they're doing and the uniqueness of, you know, creating that rain lifestyle, um, being very um, individualized with their workouts and, and the people that they're bringing in and the things that they're doing on the community, um, because it's very different from like what you're saying, Barry, like Orange Theory Fitness or, you know, CrossFit gym. They're not doing cookie cutter workouts for everybody. And, you know, they have their backgrounds in sports and baseball, especially, but, you know, they don't specialize in just that. Right. We see athletes of all ages, mm -hmm. um, youngest being like in their teens and the oldest being like, you know, 50, 60 years old. Um, and so they're they're really targeting a full audience out there. And I think it's important um, that people understand that the, the movement is, is all about being functional, you know, functional movement, biomechanically sound movement. Um, and I think that's what these guys really try to embrace and really try to emulate for these people. Um, it's a choice to live in pain, you know, um, and it's a choice to, you know, get out there and move correctly, get out there and, and, you know, take care of yourself on our end of things. Um, and I think it's important to find, to find that balance. Um, so, I, I mean, William James, I think it's important to, if you guys can, you know, touch on, touch upon the uniqueness of your programming, um, mm -hmm. and how, you know, what challenges you guys face in terms of getting people to, to move and also take care of themselves at the same time. Um, cause there's always something that you can do. And I know Willie, you touched upon that when we, mm -hmm. when we chatted, um, mm -hmm. a few days ago. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you can speak on that, I think that'd be really important for our audience to hear. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah. So with the programming guys, it's, uh, right. We have our model of kind of what we believe in. Um, we kind of call it like a power building model. So it's kind of like a mixture of like powerlifting, bodybuilding, um, kind of, kind of combined. So we, you know, we do a lot of our compound lifts. We're talking about squats, deadlifts, bench. Um, things in that nature. We work on a lot of isometrics. We work on a lot of eccentric isometrics. Um, always creating time under tension as much as we can, um, providing that we also work on form, right? And that's the biggest thing I think that we could um, that we could say about what we do is we are so strict on form. Uh, we don't let a lot of things slide. Now there's a few things where we can kind of let some let some things happen here and there when we're lifting really really heavy weights for our athletes specifically. Um, but even with them, we're, we're at that point where, you know, we tell everybody bite your egos at the door because, you know, a lot of guys will come in, oh, I'm benching over 225 with, um, unfortunately terrible form. Um, and so we're the ones that say, Hey, we got to bring it back down because when you're going to destroy your AC joint, you're going to show your shoulders, your front delt's going to take a beating. Um, and it's all those little things that I don't think a lot of people tend to think about when it comes to, um, health and wellness, right? Cause it's not a, just about, oh, fitness is one thing, but it's health and fitness. And we pride ourselves in having the separation of the two. And that can go down the route of even spiritual, right? And all those types of things, uh, the mental focus, uh, in which we talk about with a lot of our clients as well. We, I mean, there's been sessions before where James and I both have had to sit down with clients for sometimes 30 minutes and just go over little things uh, that they might be going through in their lives. And the thing that James and I both have realized is that we're not just personal trainers, we're life coaches. And we're here for these people um, through thick and thin, you know, with family issues, this and that. We just have a lot of... Um, kind of just relationships with our, with our uh, clients that are just different. And I think that's really what sets us apart from everybody else is that we actually, we literally care. 
We care about why they have these pains in their lower backs and knees and things like that. And so when it comes to the programming, we're very cautious of certain things. And, um, you know, even to the point of, I talk about programming, you know, like orange theory and stuff like that. Right. Um, we can talk about that all day long, but you know, long story short, there's too much cardio, not enough strength training. And when you have a combination of one thing, one, one thing too much and, and not enough of the other, there's always going to be some sort of risk. Most likely not to get me wrong. Not everyone's built the same. Everyone's built a little bit different. Um, but for the majority of the human beings, right. Strength training is going to be the number one uh, best thing. And that's just my personal opinion. I, I don't, I don't think too many people would disagree with that. Um, in a general sense, while cardio and other things are going to be your side dishes, right? And we're talking as the second side dish is most likely going to be some sort of mobility and fun and functional movement. And that's where we take our programming into that. So we always start our programs with, uh, again, bigger lifts. So all of our clients, no matter where they might start, their end result game is going to get under a barbell. We're going to be barbell squatting. If it's not necessarily the barbell, we have a, a safety squat bar as well, which is a little bit easier on the shoulders. Some people don't have the proper range of motion in the shoulders, but we'd also be working on those things. So it's, it's one of those things where, you know, we, we tend to say, okay, hey, this is kind of where we want to be in a bubble. But for the most time, um, we can always go outside that bubble if need be. And that's kind of where our programming takes its difference. And I think in others is that we, we can see that in the individual, but like, hey, listen, they're just not ready, no matter, no matter the program. And, right? and the one that kind of just pops in my head, if we talk about CrossFit a little bit, people go into CrossFit and they see a program and it's the same workout for everybody, no matter what where they're at um, on a scale. And that's why there's so many injuries with CrossFit, with Orange Theory and those things is because they're just, they're just not meant to be thrown at people so quickly. You know, a lot of people aren't meant to barbell deadlift. Instead, they just need the trap bar deadlift because they need the extra four inches at the top. It's those little things that we, uh, we tend to take into our programming that really, I think, set us apart from others. One question, great and great set up on that, Ashley. And yeah, by all means, always jump in when you, when you have something burning on the, on the tongue like that. That's a great question. Um, one thing, so help me understand, is it, do you guys do... Is it so? Is it basically like I'm showing up to the gyms? Like, say I'm a new, like, say I'm a new, I'm a new, I'm a new client, right? I'm mm-hmm. showing up in, and is there like time slots and like, or, or is it more like I get a slot and I'm doing a customized workout you've created for me, or it's like I show up and then we're in like five other people show up and we're doing, um, going through whatever the workout that workout of that day is, or are we all tracking through different workouts? You know, so is it like yeah. personalized in a shared space or is it like, or is it a shared workout in a shared space? Personalized in a shared space. So you have your own individual workout, your own folder, your own everything based on what your needs are and what you need specifically. So you're at your own, we have, we have six squat racks in the gym. Um, so we have technically six stations and at each single station is there, there's a, there's a new person at each station each hour. So it's an hour long workout. Um, what we do is we, they come in right at the hour, we get their temperature, they get hand sanitizer, we put them straight to their uh, slot if it's one through six. And then they, they start with the, the stretching routine, they, then they go into the mobility that we always have, and then they do their workout, which is on their personal sheet. So everyone has their own, uh, own different workout. Now, there are some things that we might throw at some people. So say maybe somebody finishes early. We do have some preset finishers that we can throw at them. Um, but again, they're all so different that no matter the individual, they, we can always find one that'll work for another. Um, but also James and I have always just you know, if we have to change something on the fly, we're really good at doing that. You know, things pop up, clients walk in, you know, cause we always ask people how they're doing when they come in. Hey, how are you doing today? Um, you know what? My lower back's a little tight today. Okay, great. Let's see what you got in the program and we'll go and switch it right away, which is also allowing us to have that personalization, um, touch that, um, again, a lot of box gyms, stuff like that don't have, uh, we're always providing that personal personalization touch to that. Super cool. Yeah. That's what, as you were talking through it, I, I kind of was getting the feel of like, all right, I go here what I'm going to get is basically by, it's like you had mentioned a home gym. It's like, I got a home gym, but I have now my pro coach who is there to help motivate me, help correct me, my giving me form, giving me tip, you know, pushing me also um, helping me modify if I need modifications and uh, really the kind of the best of both worlds. I mean, a lot of times we have people who are looking for programming, right? So they'll look online or they'll get like a template or they'll download a workout program and, that, that's cool. But the problem with that so often is you can get lost in the mix. Things are, it's, you know, it's, it's cookie cutter, the yep. stuff you don't know that you, you know, you're trying to watch a video, your form sucks. And then now in, in today's age where, where maybe you've been building a little bit of a home gym or something, you just don't have that much equipment. You know, you, there's only so mm-hmm. much you can do with a 20 pound set of 20 pound dumbbells and a treadmill or something. I mean, you know, because good luck finding exercise gear these days. Still so hard to equip your gym. It's it is ridiculous. tough. Ridiculous. It's yeah. insane. So what you're really what kind of what you're really delivering then is this personalized experience that is uh, incorporates kind of it sounds like 
the 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 whole person you know what are their health goals what are their fitness goals how do they want to look how they want to feel you know what getting into their sleep their nutrition getting into their kind of just how, their energy level all that stuff um you know movement issues whatever and then it's creating that program that's kind of a strength oriented program there to build them up there to develop that kind of a, that that those big multi functional you know multi movement lifts to really then put them on a path to help achieve those goals. And then you're providing that feedback and that adjustment along the way to get them there injury free, get them there faster and get them there in a way that they really can see progress. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. You know, Tim, I'd love to hear, you know, Tim, Tim's a big functional fitness guy. And, um, you know, Tim, why don't, why don't you share with us the wisdom of, of in, in your experience of focusing on those big lifts and those compound lifts and those, uh, those, those strength building exercises. Yeah, no, for sure. I think, you know, honestly, I think, Willie, you kind of really touched on that really well when you were saying that before. And I think that, you know, it really is one of those things that kind of, you know, if as long as the body is ready for it and you kind of prep people well for that, I think, you know, kind of pushing people to like get under a certain amount of weight, like kind of do these bigger compound movements and kind of get under a barbell and everything like that is really great. And actually adding that strength and conditioning, you know, the strength piece in there is really huge too. Cause I mean, that's one of the things that you really want to do with people is really kind of do as much as they can functionally. And that's just going to help them progress further and further as they go along with that. And, you know, for myself, I know that we kind of touched on like some of the CrossFit stuff earlier, which is one of the things that I do personally, but you did, honestly touch on one of the big pitfalls of CrossFit that, you know, you have one set workout for everybody when you're going in there and it's not really tailored to people specifically. And one of the biggest things that I find with it too, is that like, you know, you, there's not really enough time. A lot of times, especially if you're going into stuff like Olympic lifting, which I don't know if you guys do different things like that. It sounds like you guys are more like strength based and like kind of doing more of the big compound lifts, which I think is yep. great, <laughs> which especially if you're going to be doing something like Olympic lifting, there has to, it takes so much technique. It takes so much time to really learn those lifts and be able to do them properly, have the mobility for it, have the strength for it, that it's really tough in kind of like a CrossFit setting to like kind of get that training in, get that that, like knowledge in and just get that technique work in to do that. So that's one of the things that, you know, like I've definitely noticed, like, even though I do CrossFit, like I've had experience with those lifts, I've taken time on my own to like do those. So it's like, you, you know, there's exceptions to it, but those are yeah. definitely some pitfalls that I see myself as well. So the fact that you guys are focusing on those bigger strength looks like that is great because I truly believe in, you know, having people do as much as they can movement wise. And also in terms of load, and really people are going to see great benefits when they can do that. And exactly like you talked about before, there's a lot of research that shows in terms of longevity and in terms of health of the body overall going forward, strength work is one of the best things that you can do. So I 100% agree with that. That's awesome that you guys are doing that. So yeah, I mean, yeah, like I think, yeah, it's great. And the fact that you guys have it individualized, like the workouts and everything like that for people to do that, you're tailoring it specific to them it's just a really great combination of things going forward for people that are in sports. And it sounds like for people that aren't even doing sports um, at that time. So, I mean, it's really just great for life, longevity, sport, and kind of all those things. Exactly. Yeah. That's a yeah. question for you guys. Too, on the people to, go ahead. Sorry. I was just, I was just piggybacking that. And that's the goal is just getting people to, you know, be able to withstand every day, you know, life, whatever it may be, you know, they're working at a tech job or you're an athlete or, you know, you're staying at home, whatever it may be, you know, you just want to have that uh, lifestyle and, and feel good, especially as we get older, we want to put ourselves with a, with a good foundation. Yeah, it's huge. I, I, I think uh, to, to kind of use a Ronnie, Ronnie Coleman quote a little bit. It's uh, everybody wants, you know, everybody wants to look good, but nobody wants to lift the heavy ass weights as well. <laughs> so true. <laughs> I love that, I love that quote. It's so true. I love that quote too, but but one of the things that I think difference what you guys differentiates what you guys are doing than maybe what you're going to get in in like a high quality CrossFit experience. And I think like anything, you know, we have low quality and high quality and mid quality. So you know, we have really high mm -hmm. quality gyms like uh, Industrious, who's now isn't a CrossFit gym, functional fitness gym, and they do an yep. exceptional job with their coaching and their programming. You know, but but I'd say the core tenet there is around intensity. You know, one of the one of the the main functions of uh, I think a really great CrossFit workout is intensity. It's going to push you really intense, right? You're going to like trip over a bunch of 
you know, barriers that you never thought you could do and you lie there in a pool of sweat and, you know, you're going to be, it's just, it's going to destroy you, which is good sometimes. Right. And so there's Mm -hmm. a benefit to that when you're, when you're at a certain spot, when you're ready for that kind of thing. But what I've always felt is missing in many, many CrossFit gyms is that, is that older school progressive overload process. So when I think about when I started, I started, you know, at the YMCA after football, starting to lift weights, I would, I got in with these like, I was like this, you know, whatever, 16, 17 year old lifting with these just burly construction worker dudes, you know, putting up huge weights. They'd be in there working out with their jeans and their, their boots on still, you know, and like, that was my, and I was like, yeah, these guys are freaking strong and they're huge, you know, like yeah. 50 plates on each side of the leg press machine. You know, they're moving like oh, three yeah. inches, <laughs> yeah, like just the bench press. They're moving like three inches. That bar is like moving, barely moving, but it has like 10 plates on each side, you know? So that was like my my kind of introduction to, but some of them were jacked and I was like, shit, I want to be jacked like these guys. And like, this is what I want to do. What you come to realize is like, there is some, there is real true benefit to progressive overload. I mean, when you look at uh, how you get strong, like how you get look fit, how, but how you build health. Yes. There absolutely is a cardio component. Just like you said, there's that mobility component, which is so key. You know, you cannot subtract those things. You can't take them out of the equation, but you do need this progressive overload piece. You do need this strength and that strength fills you with so much more than just physical capacity. It fills you with confidence. It fills you with energy. It feels really good. Your clothes look better. Like everything everything is better when you're stronger. And so I love the work you guys are doing and I can't emphasize it enough for people like what, what you need is a strength program more so than anything else. And, and so like, do you guys, so I love that that's, that's kind of your, the foundation of your approach. I just think it's so wise. Yeah. And kind of go on what you're saying. I think the one thing that a lot of people see with CrossFit too, right. It, it really hit a, a buzz like five, six, seven years ago um rich froning right all those guys when they were starting to do their thing and i think the most important thing that people did not take away from all those things was that those guys were on a regimen strength program um you know and it was one of those things where you know people would say oh i'm just going to join crossfit and then that's where all those injuries started occurring because people didn't have that foundation of strength which is so important for that future like we just talked about and i think that's the biggest thing that i think that i have to explain to others is like hey you know the reason why i probably got hurt is because you started off too soon and it was too high intense in the beginning rather than easing your body into it, working through mobility practices. If it's some, even some yoga on the side, those little things we have to kind of prep the body for. Um, and that's the, and that's the one thing I just, I was explaining to everybody is like, listen, I think CrossFit has its moments where it's great. I think there's moments where it's, it can have its issues. Um, but when you can see a program like industrious, right. Um, we actually know the owners, we know a lot of the coaches that work there. Um, they're great at what they do. And I think the important thing is that they have strength classes, they have mobility classes, they have yoga classes, they have all those missing pieces that I think that another gym should look at and be like, man, that's the stuff that we need to then eat one an injury prevention and to keep clients there longer, right? The community itself will keep some clients there. But when you're continuously getting hurt, like month by month, like oh, I got a shoulder thing now, oh, I got a little knee thing, right? We can, we can push through things here and there. But when it seems to be a reoccurring issue is when I feel like you just have to look at the program in, in depth and be like, okay, what are we, what are we actually missing? Well, it's just that, it's, it's that little individual, individualization piece of the strength training. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. And I was going to jump in real quick there. And I think that's 100% true. Aside for myself, like kind of before I got into CrossFit, like I have a big sports background and everything like that. And really for myself after that, got into mainly strength training and like a little bit of like bodybuilding type stuff. And then mm-hmm. that kind of transitioned into CrossFit just because for myself, I've, competitive guy I like the competitive aspect of it and i think yep. having that strength background and that foundation really carried over well into that because like you know my muscles the tissues they were already kind of prepped in that way and i think that you know like a place like industrious like some other gyms in the area i think crossfit can be done well as long as you're kind of implementing those things in with it but i mean just in general it just goes back to show the importance of generalized strength training just for the health of the body overall and the health of the tissues like your muscles ligaments tendons everything like that just to make sure that those are as strong and as healthy as possible to go through more dynamic type movements yep 100 percent so, gentlemen, if if somebody's listening to this and they're just they're they're vibing on this and this resonates and this idea of like, yeah, I, I want I want a coach, I want a personalized program, you know, I, I want my own space to work out uh, where I can get that kind of coaching feedback, the encouragement, the mentorship, you know, those cues, the lifting stuff. I can I can have a person help dial in the the programming to really help me hit my goals, whether that's a how you want to look. Because remember, if you want to look good. That's all muscle, baby. Muscle is what's sexy, okay? So we need the muscle for the sexiness. You want the booty? Get the barbell. That's what I tell people all the time. So that's health. It all comes down 
to, <laughs> to get strong. Um, so if somebody was going to get started with you guys, what's the best way, you know, you know, what's the best way to do that? Should they, should they call, should they come in? How does it work? I mean, you guys accepting new, I know some gyms are, aren't even accepting new, new clients right now. Are you guys accepting new clients? What's the, what's the go forward here? If a person's vibing on what you guys are talking about. Totally. Yeah, we got, we do have some slots available. It is limited right now. We are pretty busy, but we do have some flexibility. Um, best way is just to reach out by email. You can hop on our, our website. Uh, we have a, you can email us through there or info at train rain, email us there. Uh, train uh, would be the best way to set up like a little assessment. You come in, see the gym, see our space, see how we run things. Um, and we'll get an idea of how your body moves. And then uh, from there, you know, we can break it down. And then if we move forward, um, we get you on a program and get that that whole piece going. Um, and is it so the type of thing where, where we're signing up for a, you know, uh, is it a, a sign up for six months? Do we sign up for a year? Do we sign up for a three-month thing? I know generally what you guys are trying to do and what you're helping people do is a longer-term thing. So um, it seems to me like there'd, there'd be, I don't know how you guys structure it, but how, is it structured over time periods like that? Or how do you guys handle that? handle that? We do everything by the session, actually. So whether you want to come uh, once a week, twice a week, three times a week, four times a week, five times a week, um, everything's just strictly by the session. Um, and we'll do that out. We go month by month. Um, we used to have different like tiers, whether it was like six month, 12 month, but uh, we found that, you know, you know, we continue to do what we do and do our job right. Um, we're just going to make it easy on people. We're going to give them a price. This is what it is per session. Um, and we'll run it every month. We do an auto pay system for the people that are in it for the long run. Um, and we'll, we'll shave off a few bucks for that. Uh, everybody that comes in for the first time gets our intro rate. Um, so they're able to get that. And if say if they come in twice a week, we allow them to extend that out over, uh, basically a two month period. So they kind of get that, that nice discount, um, right out the gate that really kind of get their foot in the door and build that foundation. Um, before, you know, we really just kind of put that good work in and dive in. I love mm-hmm. it. No, that's a great, so you guys really fr- flexible pricing model. Uh, so a person can use this as a supplement, um, to kind of dial in some specific things. Like maybe they're missing some really, you know, some of that specialized gear at home and they want to get some of those big lifts and they want to get it done in a safe way. So they could use you guys a couple times a week, which is awesome. Or maybe it's their just prime time. It's like, this is my hundred percent go. I'm all in and they're coming in five, six, seven times a week. And you guys can accommodate all of those, uh, different, different people and, and different goals. And, and I love that from a budgeting standpoint, you guys have some options. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the one thing that we pride ourselves on is uh, our cost. You know, we, we want to keep things um, in relative enough that people can, can afford it, right? There's, uh, there's some training that you look at the price and you're just like, that's just catastrophically way too high. You know, no matter how, how much experience people have, um, there's, there's a way to do it the right way. And we, we believe that our prices are very competitive with anybody out there. Um, that's why, also why we run a semi-private um, training facility rather than just a one-on-one. We do have some one-on-ones, um, but, but everyone's a semi-private. We don't do any groups. Right. So we're when people ask us what type of training facility we are, we're a semi-private training facility. So, again, that's why that, that's where the personalization co- comes into play, the customization and stuff like that. Um, and again, allowing people to have options, uh, I think, has uh, just allowed us to grow even more because most of our clients, you know, we James and I talk about all the time. is like a lot of them, once they sign up, um, they're they're pretty much there um, for the most part. Like before COVID, you know, we would see about 95 to 100 um, sessions a week. And now we're pushing 190. You know, and uh, yeah, so since, so, you know, uh, unfortunately COVID has been a tough, um, tough go for a lot of businesses. Um, for us, it's actually allowed us to grow by like three times the amount. It's been kind of crazy. Um, but it, it, I think it's just um, kind of the, how we take the approach again with everything and just our pricing and that people can come to our gym and feel comfortable. They feel really safe, right? We, uh, we mentioned the cleanliness that we do. We also have a couple um, uh, air purifiers in the gym now as well. So we're constantly keeping clean air. Um, we're just doing the best that we can to keep people again, really comfortable in our gym. So, and that's why a lot of our clients, when they, once they sign up, they really just don't leave. I mean, I think our longest standing client has been with us for the, since day one, three, three full years, hasn't stopped maybe a month or two off here and there for little things, but most of our clients always continue to come back. And we're actually still waiting for 30 people, um, 30 plus people, James just tallied up today that have not come back yet since COVID. So they very well could be just waiting for, you know, the election, all those little things to kind of get through to see what happens with the vaccines, this and that. So we could even expect to grow by even 30 more clients in the next three, four, maybe five months. I love it. I think it's a great model. Um, you know, similar to, to what we see at, 
it had to tow uh, we long term relationships because we're there to create real positive change in people's lives. And I think one of the things we we know we always need is we need a a place where we can get a phenomenal workout in, where we can get that coaching and mentoring and guidance guidance that's really going to help us achieve our goals. You know, you think about actually getting the goal you want versus the cost. And a lot of times when people, people get all tripped up about money, I'm like, well, what do you want? I mean, do you want like money or do you want like the result? And it's like, no, I I want the result. I want to get this thing that I always wanted. Well, it's like, well, yeah, then you should pay a little bit more and go do that. And it's not like when you, when you factor it all in, come on. I mean, it's very, very doable for most people with most budgets. So I love that you guys price things in a way, um, that, that it's accessible. Uh, and at the same time, you know, you have a strong business model that's sustainable, you know, because, uh, I, I just have never liked these super cheap fitness facilities. You have junk equipment, like whatever. But so I love, I love a, a place that, that puts premium, you know, premium stuff in and it just creates an incredible experience like you guys are doing. So highly encourage if you're listening to this and you want that level of individualized coaching, I think this is a great place to get it. And uh, guys, are they, you guys on, are you guys on the Instagram or any of that stuff? Do people, should they follow along yeah. anywhere else if uh, they want to just see some of the cool stuff you guys are working on? Absolutely. Uh, our Instagram is at train rain fit. Um, on Facebook, we're there rain fitness. I think uh, the tag is at uh, train rain fitness on Facebook. Um, as well as training fit on Twitter. So Beautiful. pretty much all the platforms. Yeah. Check awesome. them out. Awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. Cool. Well guys, thanks for being here. I uh, appreciate it so much. And, uh, we look forward to getting in there and getting some kick-ass workouts. All right. So I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna have to drop by and see the facilities. Yeah, Anytime please. reach out, let us know. Yeah. Love it. love it. I love it. I love it. All right, gentlemen, until next time, this has been a great show. And remember movement is the best medicine. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.